What's going on everyone? It's Keith Hidden. Guess what? We finally have DXR available. We have the Windows 1809 update. That is the October update that everybody was waiting for to be able to get real-time ray tracing support in Windows 10 with DirectX 12. And well, it's live. And Nvidia also has launched their drivers, the 416.16 drivers, which enable DXR, DXR support in Windows 10 8, version 1809. Uh, so yeah, that's great, except there's still no games. But you know, that's not going to stop us here from testing out uh, DXR functions. So remember, this is DXR specifically, not really RTX. Uh, in inherent RTX functions like the game stuff so you know RTX Ava on whatever this is Windows DirectX 12 DXR so the guys over at r slash NVIDIA have compiled a few demos some DXR demos that we're actually going to use to test a bit of performance across various cards to see kind of the the scaling from cards basically so we actually ended up going all the way back to the 900 series with the GTX 980 Ti and that was basically because we wanted to test the RX Vega 64 but guess what those those drivers don't support it yet so it's it was a bust it just didn't launch so nothing there so what you've been watching up to this point is the reflection demo which obviously has spinning parts and you can see the real-time reflections going on in there and it's pretty cool stuff but we did test it at a, a, a screen resolution of 1080p. Now the numbers that we're getting is this, the screen was at 1080p and the window was maximized. It wasn't full screen, so it was maximized, so it's a little less than 1080p. And that's why the numbers that we're gonna put up on the screen are gonna differ a little bit from what you're seeing um, up until this point, how they're gonna be slightly higher. And that's just because, I mean, that's extra pixels that aren't being rendered in there. So let's get the first graph up on screen. Now, the first graph we're going to look at is called MPR per second. So million primary rays per second. That's uh, the metric that was measured in the demo. And it's basically how many millions of rays per second. So this is actually something really impressive for the GTX 980 Ti. Now, this is the EVGA uh, GTX 980 Ti SC ACX2 Plus model so it's a little bit more overclocked uh, model so a little higher than a reference card but the ten, just before we get up to the 1080 ti the 1080 ti is the evga gtx 1080 ti for the win 3 so that's a pretty beefy card so that is the 1080 ti that's in this lineup here so the 980 ti is pushing 71 million primary rays per second so mprs uh, 71 and you see the GTX 1080 is only going up to 76 now you have to remember a lot of this function is very compute heavy and the 980 Ti was no slouch Maxwell was not a slouch when it came to compute uh, a lot of the compute functions fell off a bit with Pascal but you can see a good jump on the 1080 Ti over the 1080 however it's insane what happens when you go to the RTX lineup whenever it uses the hardware uh, DXR functions. Now, something to keep in mind is these demos they're made to test primarily. If it has hardware acceleration, it's going to enable it. If it doesn't, it's going to fall back to uh, the primary rendering pipeline. So that's why there's that massive difference. So this is where you're starting to see that difference from the GTX 1080 Ti to the RTX 2080. So very important to note that there. And going up to the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, you see, again, a pretty good jump. Now, if you increase the resolution, these numbers would change again because you've increased the resolution in pixels and that's going to take into consideration how many pixels total screen are being rendered. Now, how does this translate over to frame rate? Well, we did take a look at that. So let's put that chart up on the screen here. There you go, there's the difference. Now that's at 1080p. This is, again, 1080p with maximized window, not 100% full screen, so keep that in mind. But this is a comparative, we tested them all the same, so the idea here is to see the jump and leaps from one to the other. So the RTX functions clearly show a huge benefit in these cards. So the ray tracing cores, the tensor cores, the, the, whole, the whole package shows a massive, massive change. So what we see here also is that the older cards can run DXR functions. So the, it does exist. So you will be able to utilize the DXR. 
to, to what extent? Well, you see here, the 980 Ti pulls out uh, four frames behind the 1080 Founders Edition, so 35 to 39 FPS. The 1080 Ti is a great leap above the 1080 at 57, but let's just be honest, that's literally one third of what the RTX 2080 is doing right there. And the 2080 Ti again is uh, 21 FPS faster than the, 10, the 2080 rather. So that kind of shows you where you, we are with that. Now down in the description, we will be linked to an article where uh, Usman goes over a bit more detail on some of this stuff as well as some of the other demos to take a look at. And as we close it out, you'll be seeing the uh, mini engine reflection uh, demo, which I found really cool, but it wasn't as easy to test this one because you could move it around. It's really neat to see this in real time, being able to move the camera around and see it happen. So really cool stuff. Love to hear your thoughts on this down below now that we're able to see DXR. No, it's not a game. I understand that. That's pretty unfortunate because I would really like for this to have been a game instead, but we're getting to that point. So, um, yeah, take it for what you will. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you, uh, you know, get subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next video.